Continuing out the SCR system, someone asked if there's a way to check the NOx sensors. So the NOx sensors have four wires that go to the module, a ground, a power supply, which is usually machine or system voltage, and then a data bus plus and a data bus minus. If there's no other faults on a data bus for any of the other items that are on that bus, usually the data bus is okay. Uh, if the power if the power fails at the power supply relay or the fuse before that, then both NOx sensors would be offline and you'd get no data out of them, so you'd have related faults for that. But what if you have faults for the SCR system missing or the SCR system having low efficiency and there's no other faults? Well, there can be a couple reasons for that. One can be because somebody got there before you a week earlier and erased a gang load of faults. That happens more often than not. Uh, someone will, go, will uh, plug into a machine or a truck or whatever because there's a complaint about the check engine light or D rates and everything's inactive when they plug in. So they just erase the faults. Now we're going to talk in a future video about uh, how many faults is too many, how many you can just erase the fault, and when you should be investigating. Uh, that's, another, that's another topic. But tonight, what happens if you have SCR inefficiency or SCR system missing and no other faults? No knock sensor faults? Nothing. What can you do? So we're going to take a quick look. Uh, we put the faults into the fault analyzer in the QuickServe Online account. We'll take a look at what that told us to do. And then we're going to take a look at the fault snapshots. And remember, whenever a fault is logged, the ECM records all the sensor values at the moment that the uh, software decided it needed to log a hard fault code. Okay, so let's take a look at that now. Here are our list of faults. You can see at the top left there's 3151 SCR missing and then 2347 turbocharger compressor outlet temperature calculated above normal range and that's basically the air going into the charge air coolers hotter than it thinks it's supposed to be. It's a calculated number. We're not worried about that in this case. And then we had one 1117, which is a power supply loss with ignition on. That can be because uh, a, the key was turned on and off quickly. A lot of times when people are hooking up to things to check it, you'll see that because they'll be snapping the key on and off instead of letting the ECM power down. That's no big deal. And then we've got a 3582 active. So our two active are 3151 and 3582. The, uh, the fault analyzer directed us to do 30, troubleshoot 3582 first and then 3151. And so there's a lot of steps that, to check. And what I do, uh, because we were talking about, is there a way to diagnose the knock sensors? What I normally do when I see something like this is I will look at this fault snapshot for both of these faults and I will look at the knocks. So let's look at the first one, 3582. F treatment knocks corrected. This is intake, so it's right after the turbo. Coming out of the engine is 176, and the outlet is 438. Remember again, we cannot make knocks outside of the power cylinder. And let's look at the bottom one, 3151. And intake was 262, and outlet was 601. So it's highly likely that the outlet knock sensor is drifted and is reading incorrectly. In this case, we replaced the outlet knock sensor, uh, did a stationary regen, and the numbers came right into line. So the outlet knock sensor was the problem. The thing I want you to notice is that there are no fault codes on the outlet knock sensor at all. So that's why you want to use your fault snapshot and take a look at it. Thanks for joining me on Engine Shop Joe. See you next time.